um, primarily our efforts to restore the gardens, to remove the work that uh, Mr. Davis did in disturbing the woodland, and um, to fix up the interior of the courtyard and hidden court. As a part of our work um, down with Peter and Mallory, we discussed restoring and bringing back the old uh, so-called summer driveway, which is the driveway that exits out of Hidden Court to the southwest and comes out right at the intersection by the very large and old gates. It's the original driveway that Henry Robinson used to access the property. And because of that tie to the house and because of the notion that we want to bring this back, the property back to a period that dates to about uh, 1930 or 1935 in its appearance, we set about looking at that summer driveway as the primary means of access in and out of the house. What was immediately obvious to us in looking at it was that what exists there um, is a very, very dangerous situation, uh, not only for our client trying to enter and access, um, but also for cars coming up Old Ocean House Road. If you look at the boards that are on the ground in front of you, the board to your right is the conditions that exist right now. Um, with Fallow Road coming in from the left, um, 77 being straight up and down, and Old Ocean House coming in uh, from the lower right, the large green area in the center is the existing island, and then the expanse of white is the existing pavement. The uh, summer driveway comes out in the tan area from the upper right-hand corner, and to give you some sense of size here, the existing gates are just in the white woodland area. that green area. In looking at this, we went back to um, the original subdivision plan because we saw some safety problems with the family trying to use that as a driveway. And in fact, when the subdivision was created, this access way, if it were to be used for access to lot two, which was not the lot that went with the main house, but a separate lot, um, there were restrictions placed by the planning board that that driveway could be used for egress um, only. In other words, access out of the property onto Old Ocean House. Well, in looking at the situation, we felt there was a potential for a couple of solutions um, to make that area safer and to be able to meet our clients' needs, but also to make some improvements to that roadway um, to clean up the geometry and bring it closer to what you have for municipal ordinances. We retained the services of Bill Bray, who's a traffic engineer, who helped us work through the road geometry and sight line distances to arrive at the diagram that's on your left as you're facing it. Um, essentially, what we're proposing to do is to take Old Ocean House Road and pull it about six or seven feet further south and remove just about a thousand square feet of pavement and then take the old summer driveway and pull it up to the north so it enters directly onto um, Route 77. So just very quickly, the summer driveway now comes out here and we're proposing to take it and bend it to the north so that driveway would now access right off of Route 77 here. In order to achieve a better intersection alignment, we're proposing to pull Old Ocean House, the lane, the northbound lane, the access lane out of Old Ocean House, down to the uh, south and then narrow the island at its widest point taking six feet out and then create a thinner island in here. We keep the travel lane distance and width the same. We keep the alignment of the road the same. Um, essentially what we're doing is pulling out about a thousand square feet of pavement and turning it back into green lawn area and road shoulder. The effect of this is to allow the driveway to meet your ordinance standards for um, the distance between a driveway and a tangent. It actually sets up a <coughs> sight distance for Old Ocean House people coming out onto 77 to look south, left, towards in by the sea so that they have a better sight distance to cars coming northbound on 77. And um, it results in a situation that we feel improves both our clients' access in and out of the property, um, but also helps a little bit bring that road back into um, closer conformance with what we feel are appropriate. Uh, safety standards, but also your ordinances. What we've done from a procedural standpoint is we've taken this to MDOT and reviewed it with Roger Gobeil down at MDOT in Scarborough. We've gone to Bob Malley, discussed it with Bob Malley. 
Both of those individuals have indicated that they don't have a problem with it in terms of the geometry and workings of it, as long as we bear the cost of doing that. And we also are moving uh, CMP and NET pole. So we have CMP and NET working with us to shift that existing telephone pole about 10 feet to the north um, within the right of way. So the net result of all that is we end up with a driveway that has safe and adequate access in and out of the property and that would become the primary entrance into um, the property and the old service driveway, the one that exists now, um, will be left uh, essentially intact but only as a service driveway or emergency access so that will not be used on a regular or daily basis. This will be the primary access in and out. Um, we are still debating whether or not we have to conform with your ordinances to pave the first 60 to 100 feet in. We'd like to keep that gravel, um, but we expect we'll be able to work that through with uh, Bob and the planning staff and planning board when we get there. Um, just to recap, what we're looking for, I think, really, is to go in right away, pull out the pavement, and put in some lawn area. Any planting we do would be within our own property. Anything that's out in the right of way would be strictly lawn or shoulder. And we've taken the appropriate steps in here to install a culvert to take care of the drainage issues in that area and to make sure that we don't affect the Portland Water District's water line and the CMP utility uh, and any two utilities in there. We are looking at bearing the cost of resetting the curbing in the island and doing that work as well as the pavement removal. And I think as Mike pointed out, we really want to come to you and make sure you're aware of those actions before we we moved on with the planning board. So with that, I'll turn it back to you. Thank you. Thank you. Does the police chief have any comment one way or the other? Satisfied with anybody on the board? Yes, Council Dalba. Yes, one thing on, on the uh, new design that uh, I don't like as well as on the old design. The old design, the way it's laid out, allows you to come out and approach 77 at a 90 degree angle which I find is helpful, maybe it's the age of my neck. Uh, I look back over the shoulder, but it's sometimes helpful. And, and the way that island is designed, you can come out and hit it at a 90 degree angle, which you cannot do on, on the new design. Uh, maybe that's an unusual thing, and I've noticed that the police chief is not overly excited one way or another, but uh, that's just a comment that I'd throw in. Okay. Councilor Dalbeck, I, I think the the new one, which is on the left, right, correct, makes it more of a 90 degree angle. New. I think what he's talking about, Mike, if I can back up, is the end of the island right now when you come out is raked back, not at 90, but at more like 75 degrees to the road. The effect is when you turn your car, you're able to achieve a 90. The way this geometry is laid out, you, in fact, will have that 90 degree angle. We're setting that 90 degree up angle up by forcing that lane down to the south and creating that ability to look back to that left. I think what you're talking about is that look back down 77 to the south. And we're trying to create that by arcing that to the left. Yeah. To the south. Looks to me like 45 degrees. But just a comment. Anybody else? I just wondered if the manager had had any uh, you know comments. As, as I know it, uh, from the uh, staff or Bob Malley or anyone. Any Most of them are going to be reviewing it as it goes through the planning board for site plan review. You know, Bob has looked at it. He thinks that it improves it. I, uh, you know, I have to confess, looking at it, I think it improves the intersection significantly. Uh, I did have some concerns about the precedent of allowing an individual citizen who wants to change an intersection to come in and do it. And then I thought, well, that shouldn't get in the way of an improvement. Uh, it, it was, I, I looked at it more as a, as a pet peeve type issue in terms of I'm really not too sure we want to start that, that practice. However, uh, you know, my sense is that if something is going to improve something, not only for the individual citizen, but for the, the uh, the road itself, the town ought to entertain it and take a look at it. Sure. Thank you. Council Cogshaw. Um, directing my uh, question to Chief Pickering, 
In the past, has this intersection been one of the intersections where we have a high accident rate? In the past, it seemed to me it was the old Ocean House Road Fowler that had a number of accidents. I'm not sure if that particular intersection, that, that area, but it, it usually involved uh, vehicles coming out of Fowler Road. Fowler Road. So this would, unless the cars are coming across from Old Ocean to Fowler, that would be the only improvement. Yes, that, that would be the most prominent place for accidents, yes, to come across. And this should improve that because of the angle of the cars? I think it's an improvement. I do. Thank you. Anybody else? Yes, Council Mom. In regards to what um, the manager just said, I, I would just hate to see um, an accident happen to Mr. Hafmeyer or his guests as a result of us not changing this road when he's come forward and, and been willing to do something that's going to make it a safer intersection. I really think it's a it's a generous offer, and we we should be thankful and move forward with it. Anybody else? I just have one question. Did I understand you this is going to go to the planning board? In the original subdivision plan, there was a specific condition of approval about access from this driveway being outbound only. This could not be used for egress into the lot. So we have to go back to the planning board to amend the original subdivision plan to allow this driveway to be used for access and egress. So it will be a subdivision amendment. I'm not sure we tripped site plan review. But I've discussed that with um, Maureen O'Mara, and we are on the June uh, planning board agenda for a workshop. So, yes, so, we are going back. So we're approving it before they can look at it? Is that what's happening? What we're asking for is for your review and comments before we pass on to the planning board so that you're aware of what's being proposed within the town right of way. Everybody understand? We had a discussion that... You know, on the one hand, you know, <coughs> we had a real debate as to when it should come to the council. Are you telling the planning board what to do, whatever? And we came down on the side that these things shouldn't go to the planning board involving town property unless you, you've had a look at it first. So. Anybody got a comment on one or the other? So. I understand the motion then is to recommend this for the planning board review? No, the, the, the motion would be that the council uh, approves it in concept uh, subject to final s approval by the planning board. I'd make that motion. I'll second it. Been moved and second. Everybody understand the motion so we don't have to come back to the council. Well, the, the one issue that may have to come back to the council is the pole location under a totally different Correct. statute. Correct. We're saving that for a later date. Everybody understand the motion? Ready to vote? All in favor, raise your hand. Those opposed, it's a vote. Thank you. You're welcome. Item 148 is a item to go into executive session, which I should read later. But we have an item 149 that should be approved tonight. Anybody can to make a motion? We take an item out of order. So moved, Mr. Chairman, that we take 149 out of order. Do I hear a second? Second. Been moved and second. All in favor? No. Raise your hand. Those opposed? It's a vote. Item 149, to consider accepting of the COP FAST grant and to, to consider authorizing the Chief of Police to advertise the position and take any necessary action. Now, does anybody have any comment? Would you like to hear from the Chief? Or do you all understand the motion and the memo that was put before you? I would like to add one thing. Uh, a, a major piece of this position is going to be cooperation with the school department. And when the council discussed this earlier as the finance committee, uh, it made reference to the fact that there needed to be quite a bit of involvement with the school department. Uh, 
The Chiefs had very preliminary discussions with the school department, but they're still preliminary. Uh, Dr. Goldman's been very busy with school funding and, and other issues, and uh, it is an area I just want to reassure the council that as, as this evolves and before anyone is, is hired, that the Chief will be working very, very closely uh, with Dr. Goldman and with other school officials. Thank you. Councilor Delva. I'd just like to uh, ask the uh, police chief uh, how uh, he is uh, going to uh, fund this out of an overtime uh, account which is habitually blown to smithereens. <laughs> I'm not, not going to say uh, Well, of course, th this, this position should stand on its own. Uh, the position would be available to cover overtime shifts. However, uh, should this person be out for any reason, it's a position that doesn't have to be filled. So it wouldn't generate overtime if the person was out for holiday, vacation, or sick leave, or whatever. Uh, in that regard, it, it just basically creates another resource for us to fill a shift, and perhaps fill a shift without paying overtime, because we wouldn't have to go back to the roster and pay somebody beyond 40 hours to cover another shift. You're confident that if uh, this comes out of your overtime account uh, a year from now, uh, the council will be able to uh, ask you uh, how you sit uh, with your uh, overtime budget and you'll be well within budget? Barring unforeseen circumstances, political aspirations, etc. Et yes. <laughs> I'll take a note, Dave. <laughs> it's on record. On record. <laughs> Anybody else? <laughs> yes, Council Lavin. We've talked a lot in the past couple of years about um, drug and alcohol issues in our schools and in our town and um, shared a lot of concerns about it. And therefore, I think that it would be appropriate to make a motion that we accept the COPS FAST grant in authorize the chief to advertise the position at this time. Second. We have a second? Second. And moved and second. Everybody understand the motion? All in favor, raise your hand. Those opposed? Opposed. <laughs> Any citizens out there? Any discussion period? I, I have uh, one item. Councilor McLaughlin, uh, is the council aware, is not here this evening due to the death of her mother yesterday. Uh, she had asked some time ago for an item to be put on tonight's agenda that would set a public hearing next month on the, the ball fields uh, at Fort Williams Park. Uh, because of a, a provision within the ordinance, the council was not able to do that or even to entertain it within 30 days of, it, it had to be at least a 30 day period elapsing since last month's meeting in April. That 30-day period has not elapsed. Uh, so she asked me to mention this evening uh, that she would like the council to entertain and for me to speak to the chairman uh, sometime hence uh, the possibility that at the May 22nd town council workshop, the council might be able to have a special meeting at which time you would set a public hearing for the June meeting uh, on those particular proposals. Uh, so you know, as, as things become clearer between now and May 22nd, I'll speak to the chairman uh, about whether or not he would desire to have a special meeting of the council uh, on May 22nd, uh, the sole purpose of which would be to set a public hearing uh, for the June meeting of the council. Councilor Cogshaw. Well, we have sufficient information from the planning board and the Fort Williams committee in order to be able to it, it conduct is, a public hearing. Yes, it is expected uh, by May 22nd there will be recommendations from the Planning Board and the Fort Williams Advisory Commission. Anybody else? So you all understand come May 22nd, we will be thinking. So we'll move on to item 148. Consider entering into executive session to receive an update in the collective bargaining for the Cableless Police Association and take any necessary. I'll skip the word, but that's okay. So moved. Second. 
All in favor? Raise your hand. Those opposed? So vote. Thank you all, and I believe the TV people can retire for the evening. How are you doing?